What's up guys? Today we're checking out Rage 2 and I'm playing this on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now you can also get it of course on the Xbox One or you can get it on the PC and this is actually out today. It's uh, full price at $60 and this is from Bethesda. They actually sent it over a few days early so I've had a chance to play it and kind of just collect some thoughts on it. These are basically just my impressions as I've played through the game and I say through the game because I'm pretty much at the end of like the main campaign technically and this is very much an arcade open world shooter with some RPG elements to it and there is quite a bit to this game when you actually start playing it but it's not all it's not all good there are some issues here um, and that's kind of issues that you run into when it comes to an open world game whether it's some glitches here and there with like floating weapons or floating items and and others and some repetitiveness that also comes with the open world that you usually get with these types of games now rage 2 takes place a couple decades i believe after the first one i wasn't as big into the first one as i think other people were i saw it more or less as a very good looking game there was kind of a i don't want to say a tech demo but it was a very good looking game on consoles at the time and uh, even on pc but at consoles it really pushed those systems the, the 360 and the ps3 but people did like it and there was a bit of a following to it if you like the first rage you will like this one okay so if you're already like into the first one you're probably gonna just go and pick this up have a good time and you'll enjoy it so rage 2 this is the full map and you see it right away they don't really unlock any parts or anything i mean you go to certain spots but it's not like uh branched off and you unlock the different spots you just kind of drive through and you have a ton of icons on your screen pretty much right away you have a lot of these little question mark things here that when you go to them you'll discover them and then you'll get uh different things from it so the idea here is you're a ranger and you have different abilities that you unlock as you go to them so there are these uh spots on the map like this for example it's an arc you go to the arc you beat a challenge around it which generally comes down to you just killing enemies and then you get an ability which is fine i mean like you get different abilities and weapons from them as well i got a really cool revolver that if you shoot somebody with it you then snap your other finger and it explodes because it's the, they've been stuck with it kind of like the like a fiery plasma grenade from halo essentially so here is a pit stop we're going to kill some enemies here and this is essentially what you'll run into you'll notice it's fairly smooth there is a benefit here for the playstation 4 pro and the xbox one x as they get 30 frames per second as opposed to the base models getting uh or they get 60 as opposed to the base models getting 30 so 60 on the enhanced consoles the pro and the x or 30 on the base consoles and it's 1080p i believe across the board for all of that so we have a uh, fuel containers we need to destroy here and then we also have of course plenty of enemies to shoot some of them have armor which is that yellow indication that pops up now this game very much is a uh i would i would classify as a shooting gallery what i mean by that is you literally just shoot a lot of people that's pretty much your your goal you uh you light them up and uh at that point you get health back or or ammo back and after that as you complete objectives you will get different things to upgrade an obscene amount of stuff so the one thing that i've really enjoyed about this game is it does give you a lot of incentive to explore and to uh and to look around a bit harder so they have like different uh there we go different chests they're hidden around they have arc chests they have regular chests that have like currency in them uh they have different crystals that you'll find that'll let you upgrade there is a lot of stuff to upgrade in this game for your character I mean, it is like an obscene amount of stuff, which was, which was a cool surprise because it, it, it makes me want to keep looking around for things. So if you are someone, there's some money, look at that, $206. Uh, and then you also will take mechanical components and everything. They have uh, what is essentially crafting in the game, technically, as you uh, can build weapons and stuff with them or items. And there we go. So you just pick up a bunch of random stuff as you go. I have assault rifle rounds, health infusion, which is basically med packs. And you actually can go around to all these different spots. So it'll even tell me I have storage containers. Still have four of them to find and a five. And then a data pad. And I'm still looking to destroy all of these, uh, there we go, fuel containers. So let me actually jump up here. You have kind of a, I guess it's kind of a parkour. I mean, you can grab a ledge and 
basically pull yourself up if you're if you're next to something. You can run, of course, sprint. You get this dash that shoots you forward, and it'll regenerate like that. So there is some good movement options here as well, which you will need against certain bosses that you'll run into. And as I go across the world, I ran into some optional bosses, which was kind of a neat thing. Some of those question marks aren't just uh, items or chests or, or little random events where you just shoot people and move on. Some of them were actually optional bosses that I've uh, that I've run into, which was kind of a neat thing. I, I ran into that. It was kind of an, uh, almost like a, an instance or just a cave that I went through. And there were some cool things in there, yes, but at the end uh, of one, for example, I actually ran into a full-on boss that I fought. Now, I will admit the boss was not uh, the smartest <laughs> that I've seen. I mostly just dashed around him, kept shooting him, and eventually the boss fell, and uh, that was kind of it. Now I got some cool items from it and everything to upgrade, of course, but I didn't feel like it was super difficult to win. It was, it was pretty straightforward. I don't know if I was just overpowered for that section or what, but I didn't have any real issue uh, defeating them. The gunplay in the game is good. Uh, it, it feels solid. Uh, aiming, shooting, and everything. I uh, haven't any issues there. It is way better from what I can tell, I'm sure, with this kind of a frame rate compared to 30. Uh, it feels more like like a Call of Duty almost, kind of. Think of like that. It has motion blur that kind of helps with the movement looking around as well when it comes to that. Um, all of which can be turned off. So if you're someone who does not like motion blur, if we go into the settings and we have video settings, uh, you have a field of view toggle so you can turn it up and down. You have uh, chromatic aberration, then you have motion blur. So you can turn all of that down if you would like or just off completely. You don't have to just keep it on. Let me blow these up with focus. So I have a little focus that will actually let me blow up the fuel tanks. Um, so you don't, have to turn, you don't have to keep any of that on. You can just turn it all off, which... There are some people who are probably really happy to hear that. I guess kind of the way I, I guess I would describe this game because the plot isn't anything that's really kept me invested. Like I haven't really been pushing through like the main branch of the campaign because I, I want to find out necessarily what happens next. I more or less want to keep playing so that I can get more loot, upgrade uh, items, find more cool weapons. Like actually let me use, uh, where is it? I have a shotgun. Uh, where is it? There we go. Yep. So there's my Firestorm revolver. That's what I'm talking about. So this I got in, a, in an arc, and you blow up and sight, uh, set people on fire with it, which is kind of neat. I also have my shotgun and my pistol, and there's a lot of other stuff I still need to unlock. And what's funny about that is I've almost done the game, but there's still so much stuff that I need to unlock. Like, you can probably just outright speedrun this game and not get much of anything. But the way I see this game is uh, it's one of those games where I feel like I could have some headphones in, not care about the plot or anything, and literally listen to, like, a podcast or some music or something. Almost, it reminds me of Doom, I guess, to that degree, where you don't really need to worry too much about the plot or anything. You're going through, you're wiping people out, right? Wiping out enemies, you're getting upgrades, and you're having fun doing that. So, the way I would see it is I wouldn't get this game if you're looking for anything too deep from a story perspective. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna do anything for you there. But if you're someone who likes the, I guess, kind of the looter shooter stuff, with the open world and the ability to explore and do stuff, yeah, you're, you're probably going to get a kick out of this game and really enjoy it. And if that's what Bethesda was going for, and uh, Avalanche, I guess, then they have something here, and I think they did it well. But here's the thing. When you build an open world to this size, you end up with a lot of empty space. Like, I mean, a lot of empty space. If you don't have a vehicle, which you also collect vehicles, which is cool, and upgrade them... It's really boring. <laughs> Running through this map with no vehicle is is not fun. You just kind of get bored. You're just sprinting. They do have fast travel, fortunately. So if you're in that predicament, you can fast travel. But, like, your vehicle will get destroyed. And maybe you're, like, kind of close to where you want to get to. And you're, like, I don't feel like fast traveling back, getting a car, and then driving all the way back. Running for what can be, like, a couple minutes. It's There's not a lot of sightseeing. It's, it's just kind of boring like i don't think the map needed to be this big because there's not as much to find outside of those little question marks and stuff occasionally you'll see enemies driving around which is which is kind of cool i guess uh but they don't necessarily drop anything that's worth much here's a question mark for example right there 
that we can go to. And they have these cool little waypoints on the ground that I really like. So if you're driving around and you set a waypoint, they have the, uh, of course, the stuff on the floor there on the ground, and it'll tell you where to go. Uh, I, I do like that. So that's good. It kind of reminds me, of course, of like the thing like the forts, uh, uh, driver assist stuff. So that does make it a bit easier to find where you're going without having to keep looking at the map every single time. It's got, it, it's confused itself a few times. There were a couple times where it kind of got confused and, and, and had me going in a circle for a while, but, uh, otherwise it was all right. It, it gets the job done, I would say. So we're coming up to the, that question mark, as you're seeing on the map here. And let me speak to you for a second about the upgrades that I was referring to. So if we go to the right here, we have our full inventory that'll show us all the cool stuff that we have. You can upgrade in there if you would like, where you can upgrade uh, all of the stuff you have, grenades and everything. You can upgrade your nano trites as they call them, which are your abilities. So I have shatter. It's basically a force push is what I call it, or just push people. Uh, you have grab jump that lets you double and triple jump and even hover. Defibrillation brings you back to life. And then constitution focus and others are kind of passive abilities where constitution is how much damage you can take. For example, you have weapons that you upgrade. So I have a pistol, my assault rifle, a shotgun, firestorm revolver. And then there's some other ones that I still need to up or I need to find in those arc, uh, those arc containers that you get. And you upgrade these further. So there is my shotgun. I would go in here. Uh, there's some upgrades I could do. I don't have any of the core mods, the weapon core mod. I'd have to get those. But if I want to unlock this tier, I would hold this down with the, the, the crystal fluorite or the, the feltrite that I've, that I've collected. And it'll unlock that part. So that's weapons. You have projects. You've got to see what I'm, what I'm saying here, right? As you go through, you get a lot of stuff. Um, that you can then unlock. So here's capture and control. I actually have six of those, so I could do some unlocking here. Um, where this one gets 20% 20, 20 more cash when selling to buyers, which you do a lot of. Um, you can also find the trade route where the uh, where you'll see the the, ro the roaming trader will just kind of drive around and you can uh, hail them and they'll they'll come by and sell you stuff. So if I just buy these, I've now upgraded further and I have extra abilities. There is a lot of stuff. You then can also upgrade your vehicles that you get, and there's a lot of vehicles that you find. You find them, you bring them back to base, and you get to keep them. So there's an obscene amount of stuff to, to unlock, and they give you a lot of stuff to do to then unlock those items and different abilities. So there is a lot of stuff going on here, and I actually, I like that. I do. You can race people, as you see there. That's the one thing I'll give this game a lot of credit for. It constantly, I mean, just constantly throws stuff at you. I passed right by that question mark, by the way, uh, constantly gives you stuff to do. Um, and some of it can be repetitive because it's like, oh, clear this place out, clear this place out. But sometimes you'll get thrown into like a race. Uh, you'll have to track down a convoy. And from that side, I do enjoy it. And I think that's why I kind of just blasted through this game it is because at least for the campaign, especially, it was constantly giving me something else to do. And I like the gunplay. So I think if you go into this, like I said, expecting something that you don't take too seriously, you just have fun, you run through an arcade-like open world experience, you'll have a good time. But again, if you're looking for something a bit more serious, something that uh, has a serious narrative to it and it's gripping and everything, you're, you're probably not going to have a, a great time with it. And I pass it again. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts on Rage 2. Um, I think it's fun. Is it worth the 60? That's kind of up to you and what you want out of the game. But I definitely could tell you there's enough content here to for a $60 game. I can, I can at least say that. Um, but uh, that's going to be up to you beyond that if this is a game you would like to play. So let me know what you guys think about Rage 2. Did you pick it up today? Or were you planning on picking it up? Let me know what you, you think about so far, I guess, the marketing and what you've seen otherwise. Oh, this is an actual... Uh, Oh, there's a ranger up here. See, these are like the thing. Like the question mark I found turned into a, a ranger. And and these, these are kind of the things I'm talking about. A uh, little bit of exploration, right? It's just a question mark on the on the map. And I think there's an actual like ranger here that might give me a new ability. Like I said, these are the kind of things that, that I like about this game. Uh, is, is that you kind of have these moments where if you run around exploring... You're going to find some really cool stuff. So here's uh, some containers here. Plenty of currency that I've got. And there should be... Locate the Fallen Rangers. There should be a ranger around here that is not alive anymore. 
and most likely he'll probably give me a they that ranger will give me uh something i can upgrade with so i actually walked right past the ranger earlier kind of in a uh dark situation there but i should get something from ranger rickman so they'll give you kind of a, a bit of an intel about them what happened and there you go i got a weapon core mod that i can now use go in here to upgrade one of my weapons i just got to figure out what i want to upgrade let's see i know i just did the the shotgun i guess let's see what i have here i also have the armor breaker shot magazine capacity uh that increases damage inflicted to armor which can kind of annoying if i have to I think it's that. I might just do... I'm going to do the armor shot so I do more damage. Um, oh, I need two. Okay, so I need two for the second. And I need th okay, so I can just do one of these. So I have magazine capacity or speed loader. I like having more mag uh, more shells in the magazine. So there you go. Now I have 12. Uh, and that's that's what I mean. That's the kind of stuff. And then you'll level up your uh, one of your... One of your... Uh, the people that you're fighting with. And after you get them to a certain level, which they're all at 6, 5, and 6, I believe it's when they're all to 5, you can, you can start going on to the next phase and initiate, I believe, like... The end of the game. That's what I mean. It's it's interesting, uh, but but overall, those are my thoughts on Rage Two. So uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike if not, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>